Hello and happy day five. Yes, going strong and keep pressing. We are pressing. We are breaking down barriers. We are removing lies that have been told all our lives, that story that has been playing in our minds. And we are really digging to the roots of what it is that has been blocking us from being kind, what has been um, stopping us from being kind to ourselves and to others. If you are watching the replay to this challenge, um, I just want you to make sure that you start in day one and that you do the assignment for each day, day by day, take it one day at a time. It's a lot of uncovering, it's a lot of removing, it's a lot of digging deep and truly identifying the roots as to why we are not being as kind as we wish or we want or we know we can be. And as the testimonies have been coming in and the questions, I'm just so grateful grateful to be able to host this, be able to share this journey with all of you, because this is a very powerful um, challenge. It's really going to shift us from day one to day 30 into being kind, kinder, right? Because you're all kind. We are all kind. It's inside of us. Now I'm, I'm just here to help us remove and uncover what has been stopping us what barriers have been there what lies have we been playing over and over in our heads that have been keeping us from going from level to level to level remember we are ascending we are going to know what it truly means to walk in kindness and to be kind and we have really been very intentional and in focusing on the five pillars we have been talking about the mind the will and our emotions being kinder to ourselves in those moments right being kinder in our thoughts being intentional understanding why are those thoughts playing in our head we have also been talking about being kinder to our health how can i be kinder to my body my physical health and our spirit right we have to feed our spirit how can i be kinder and be very intentional in building my relationship with god my relationship and and knowing that i i have access to god and i can have a relationship with him so what is stopping me from reaching out to him what is stopping me from hearing his voice what is stopping me from knowing his will for my life because we we all have a purpose you have a purpose you were placed on this earth with a unique purpose your purpose is so unique there is no one else in this world there will never be anyone else in this world like you so truly understand that let that sink in and resonate in your spirit whenever you start to feel different whenever you start to feel like an outcast whenever you start to feel like you're you're wrong and everyone else is agreeing and and what you're saying does not resonate with them know that you are chosen you are unique you are special and you have a purpose that is so big that these lies that we have been um playing in our heads have been playing in our heads since we were children is what is stopping us from truly walking in our purpose because that's how much of an impact you are going to have on somebody else so don't ever forget that don't ever let the lies of being different come in and steal your uniqueness your calling your purpose your gifts your talents everything has been given to you and only you one way i would like to um put it in in retrospect is let's look at a beautician right? I love beauty. I love makeup. I love nails, all of that. Do we need it? No, definitely not. We are beautiful without it. But if you enjoy it and it brings you um, some kind of joy, then right, let's enjoy it. Let's embrace it. But no, we are beautiful without any of it on. However, one of the things that I would love to connect to is let's look at a beautician, right? We have a beautician, but they are each different. You will not go to the person who does your hair to do your nails because the call on their life is special and unique their gifts their talents you will not go and get your eyebrows done with the person who does um lashes 
right? Each one requires different talents, different gifts, and most importantly, passion. Because if you know, um, beauticians go to school and they, there's some schools, well, they will actually equip them to be able to do hair, do updos, do um, waxing and nails and makeup, but it's what they're passionate about that they really focus in on and try to to build that build their portfolio on that so it's the same thing a beautician was created to beautify 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 us right we go to them to to have a moment of um glam to have a moment a little moment of me time self time it depends how you look at it but they cannot go and teach a child how to read just like i cannot go and um put nails on somebody or lashes on somebody. It requires talent. It requires your gifts and it is part of your purpose, your, your, your purpose, even though we may have similar qualities because I'm as a teacher, right? I go and I encourage kids. I'm encouraging you. I encourage people. That's part of my gifts, my talents, my purpose. That's part of my destiny to motivate you, to bring awareness to others so they can walk in the fullness of who God created you to be, right? So you can walk in that. You can walk in your purpose and lead you to your destiny. That is part of who I am. Now, as you are discovering this, because you're going to begin to start to see what is your purpose on earth. Like this 30 day challenge is more than just um, being kinder to ourselves and others. The moment we start to be kind and we start to unpack and remove the barriers and the lies that have been playing in our heads, we're going to have so much clarity that we're going to be able to see what our purpose is. And it's going to lead us to our destiny. Now, I always say destiny is not a one place location. Our destiny is forever growing and growing and growing. And we're going from one place. It's just like when you travel, right? First, you go to Florida, the beaches. Then you're like, oh, next I want to go to the Bahamas and see the ocean um, and the views and the islands. And you, you keep wanting more you keep wanting to see more you keep wanting to expand you, you start taking little steps right maybe you begin off with a road trip and then you go and get on a plane to go to florida and then you begin and say i want to go to uh the bahamas i want to go to um mexico i want to go and just travel the world it doesn't just be like well i'm gonna travel the world and go no it's it requires us to start in baby steps it requires so everything that you are doing every assignment that i'm asking of us to do right now is important because it is going to lead us it's the steps it's the roadmap that we are going to take to be kinder to ourselves to be kinder to others and most importantly to be kinder in the five pillars we are really focusing on the five pillars which is our mind our will and our emotions our health our physical bodies our finances our relationships and being uh, building that relationship in our spirit with god so today I'm on here just to encourage you. I want you to take this day to just reflect. That's going to be your assignment today. Reflect over the last four assignments. And today, day five, what have I learned? What has been revealed to me? Just jot down ideas and things that have come to you, to your mind because this is what's going to lead, right? Reflection as a teacher and in the classroom, we always have to stop. Fridays is usually the days where I um, give my students an, an assessment, right? I'm not gonna start explaining it, that's the teacher in me, but no. <laughs> I'm So I'm giving you this assessment, this self-reflecting assessment, okay? So we're all going to take the time to reflect We've identified kindness. We've talked about kindness. We learned about kindness. Um, we have been breaking down our weaknesses and our strengths in the five different pillars, right? I shared my testimony. I, I hope that that was helpful as well. And that allows you to be able to connect your story to your childhood or to your past, because know that nothing in our past is wasted. Nothing that we have gone through is ever wasted. It's all going to, it has all been equipping us. It has all 
been building us to be where we are today. We are the women we are today because of our past, whether good or bad, but we learn from the bad. Never look at a bad time or a bad season or a bad moment or challenge in life, in your family, in you yourself, your mind, your thoughts, your wills, your emotions, right? Sometimes they try to come and take over and they create a storm within themselves, the emotions. So never look at that as time wasted or in regret. No, look at it and learn from it. This is why self-reflecting is so, so critical. I really want you to take this time and don't just think about it. I need you to write it. I need you to put it on paper. I need you to type it in your notes. I need you to put it in your voice memo, right? Depending what you prefer. If you need to see it, if you want to put your strengths on weaknesses, right? You're a kinesthetic learner, meaning that you learn by doing, then put it on a post-it note and move it. Put it in on a piece of paper in your um, categories. You could do strengths, weakness. This is for you to be able to self-reflect as you choose. I'm giving you the assignment. Now you decide how you want to um, show that. How do you want to represent that? But it cannot stay right here. It needs to be put on paper. You can type it out if that, if you prefer, as long as you put it down that those ideas, that self-reflection part on paper or on something like transfer it out of your mind okay there's a lot of power in writing there's a scripture um which i love and i constantly share with others writing there's so much power in our writing write it down don't ever um just hold it in don't ever keep it in your mind because you will not remember you will not remember and i want you to look back at these notes this is why i asked you to buy a notebook i want you to look back at these notes and reflect and see how far we have come see how far you have come in this challenge um it is back uh, i'm gonna find the scripture for you because i'm all about um being rooted in integrity and truth and this is why i am the foundations of this journey the foundation foundations of this challenge is our scriptures because if it is found in the bible the bible is filled with principles which is filled with instructions and if we are obedient and follow instructions there's nothing that's going to stop us from our breakthrough there's no one who's gonna stop us from our breakthrough and this is why i'm just so excited to see the transformation that takes place um, within this 30-day challenge so as we are self-reflecting it says habakkuk habakkuk i'm not sure how to say it but 2.2 write down the revelation make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it that is here we go i'm more familiar with the james version and the lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it okay plain upon tables plain on a notebook plain on paper write it down there's power in your writing now if god said this and actually it is a scripture then there's our proof that's our word that's our rock we are standing on that so we are going to write down our reflections this is really really critical i pray that you understand this assignment and that you are very transparent and vulnerable remember the more transparent and the more vulnerable we are the bigger the transformation the bigger the breakthrough there should not be anything that you do not put down on the paper just write it down right and put it in a safe place if you don't want anyone to read it put it in a safe place this is just for you this is the assignment that you know is going to equip you and is building you in the midst of this challenge day five um but yes and the scriptures that we have used i will share with you because there's power in the scriptures right we are rooted in the word of god and the scriptures as we tell ourselves these scriptures this is what we can um just keep thinking about and meditating throughout the day is proverbs eleven seventeen. when you're kind to others you help yourself 
when you're cruel to others, you hurt yourself. And Luke 6, 35. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons or daughters and daughters of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. So just keep that in mind. And then we've also learned about what is an enemy. Identifying an enemy. How it does not always have to be a person. So that is the assignment for today. I want to encourage you. Um, set, so day six and seven would technically be the weekend. It's going to be short videos and it's going to be videos with just teaching. And we're really going to focus on rest. After we do our self-reflection, there's going to be time for us to rest and receive all that we need to receive during rest because there's so much power in rest there's times where the to-do list can be pages long right especially right now with kids going back to school seasons are about to change routines are changing there may be a shift in your environment there may be a shift in your career there may be a shift in your um you're going to start a new job a new role so the to-do lists are immense, but the greatest weapon or the greatest way to prepare yourself is to truly take the time to rest and allow God to truly speak to you and lead you. When you rest, you come back recharged and you come back ready. And what seemed like a burden will soon begin to come be um, almost miraculously just checked off at how quickly things are going to start moving. So don't ever underestimate the power of rest. Don't ever think, I need to be busy. I need to be doing something. And I'm going to share the scripture that comes to me when I remind, when I know that I'm being called to a, a season or a day or a time of rest is when Martha and Mary were at home and Martha was, was cooking and Jesus arrived. Immediately, when Jesus arrived and the disciples, Mary went to sit at the feet of Jesus. She was just soaking up his presence. She was basking in his presence and receiving the impartation, receiving the teaching, receiving the wisdom, receiving the knowledge, while Martha was busy cooking and trying to tend to the guests and get the food ready and she had the stove going and she was trying to prepare everything and it really got to martha that she it, it, it got to the point where martha and i'm just telling the story you can find it in scripture i will find it for you to go read it it's, i think it's important that you read it and you understand it every time you read it every time i read it when we read it it's going to give us a new revelation but as martha um she was upset and she went and she told Jesus, Jesus, look at Mary, like, tell her to help me. I'm over here cooking and I'm over here getting everything ready and working. And she's just sitting down. And what Jesus said to her was so powerful. It, it really just. I have to find it. It's Luke 10, 38. Luke 10 38 now I have to find the King James version because let's see so Luke 10 thank you so much for being patient with me because as I'm just sharing these uh, revelations Holy Spirit is giving me this so I want to make sure that I give you the full picture and that I give it to you as the words that Jesus spoke to Martha okay so but Martha came exasperated with finishing up the numerous household chores in preparation for her guest. So she interrupted Jesus and said, Lord, don't you think it's unfair that my sister left me to do all the work by myself? You should tell her to get up and help me. This is actually the TPT version, the, transla the translation, the passion translation. The Lord answered her. Martha, my beloved Martha. Beloved Martha, why are you upset and troubled? 
pulled away by all these many distractions, Mary has discovered the one thing most important by choosing to sit at my feet. She is undistracted and I won't take that privilege from her. I want you to look up the word troubled, upset, and I want you to look up the word undistracted. So Martha was troubled, Martha was upset, and Mary was undistracted and privileged. She understood that was a privilege. Look up these four words, and I want you to identify who are you this weekend. That's what's going to be the assignment for Saturday and Sunday. Defining that role. What is your role? Who are you in, the, in this in this? Um, in these roles. What part do you play? Are you sometimes Martha? Are you sometimes Mary? When is it easier to be Martha? When is it easier to be Mary? Right? And truly understanding what you need in this season. Lots has been shared, oh my goodness. But this video will be for today, day five, and it will be for day six and day seven. I will come on and share more. Um, Sunday just to prepare us for day eight and the next set of, the next week um, the next part of the second part of the challenge because it is 30 days so I'm just so excited and I can already see so much transformation taking place amongst all of you and it's just so beautiful to be able to witness that and God will God gets all the glory God gets all the glory for everything that is taking place Thank you so much. I pray that you have an amazing day five, a day filled with lots of love, a day filled with lots of joy, lots of peace and patience. Love you all. Talk to you soon. And I will see you on day seven. Bye.